Every so often, I get asked the question, what is the right way to study Golang, Go, or any sort of programming language for that matter? And in this particular question over at the Golang subreddit, hi, I am new to programming and I chose Go language as I want to do server side development. Watching videos and reading books, I can't grasp the essence of the language, understand what is used for what and so on. I don't fully understand what channels are used for in real development. I can't find a course or a book that will explain the Go programming language to me as a beginner. If anyone has any recommendations, please give me advice on what to do in such case. So there is this one comment by Zootbot that just says build and that's kind of it. That's the best advice. However, a while back, I made a video four months ago, the best resources to learn Go if I could start over, where I basically talk about and give you my recommendation of the best courses, textbooks, even online resources for someone to pick up the Go programming language. And just to kind of reiterate on that video and even add some new ones, there is the Let's Go and Let's Go Further series by Alex Edwards. It's an online PDF. I highly recommend these two textbooks. Start with Let's Go because it's the introduction, more beginner friendly. And then let's go further. As it says, it's for advanced patterns for building APIs and web applications in Go. And another interesting resource I recently came across is 100 Go mistakes and how to avoid them. And this is particular chapter eight because the Reddit post was asking, what does concurrence even mean? What's the difference between parallelism? They don't understand it. So there's another good resource as a bunch of chapters here. You can see chapters one all the way to chapter eight where it talks about the foundation concurrency, practices, et cetera, et cetera. So here's another good resource, 100 Go mistakes and how to avoid them. And another really good resource I didn't talk about in my first video is learn Go with tests. This is a gitbook.io. All links will be in the description down below, just so you know. And if you like this kind of video, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. But you can see here, it's learn test-driven development with Go, which is a great way to, you know, practice TDD with using Golang as the language of choice here. A bunch of good foundations here, and it's a really good book as well. However, the comment that I kind of want to focus on is the one that Zootbot gave, which is just build but check out this course. And it's kind of like this age old answer where the best way to learn is to just keep building. And that's the answer. I have it highlighted here. But then the question is, what do I build or how do I know what to build? Because I see this all the time with people who are new to coding, new to programming languages, or even are trying to, you know, go from a beginner to an intermediate or an intermediate to a senior. It's like, well, I, I get it. I get that I, the best way to program is to build. I just don't know what to build. And the best answer I could get for this is kind of twofold. One, I don't have the right answer for you. And I'm not a person who really believes in like, do these five projects to make you better or, you know, make these clones or the must projects to add on your resume. Because I truly believe the best way for you to learn is to solve your problems. And let me explain that. When you solve your problems, you're driven by a motivation that's beyond the scope of just learning programming just for the sake of learning programming. When you have a pro problem that you wanna either solve or have a different solution or really do a spin on an existing solution, you are driven by the fact that you want it to work. You wanna get that solution in a way that makes sense and is usable, as opposed to just following something that's like, yeah, do this project, here's a GitHub code, make it work. And how you could find these problems is this could be something on GitHub, like a GitHub project or a GitHub issue. Now, I don't recommend that everyone just goes into random GitHub projects and, you know, start making pull requests. I highly recommend go into the issues tab to see if there's an issue that you have faced before. Don't just pick and choose an issue, although that may be a good, you know, path as well. Find an issue that may be something you faced or it's an issue that you have experienced and maybe there's not an issue ticket. Maybe you have to make one and that's a good way to kind of learn and start solving problems on your own. It could also be an existing product. It could be something that you have used before like a Pomodoro app or a to-do list or something more advanced like a budget tracker or an API that interacts with your Twitch chat. It could be any of these things and that existing product could work really well but there could be something it's lacking to solve your particular problem. And so that's an opportunity for you to go in there, modify it or do a spin on an existing project and really make it your own and add a different problem or solve a different problem for it. The last point I have is you have to have the goal because this is what separates a kind of like a script kitty or, you know, just a nine to five 
career programmer and there's nothing wrong with them but from what i've seen to get to that 10x or level to get to that real like high level programmer those real mythical senior engineers they are driven by something beyond the scope of just writing code for the sake of writing code they have this goal this inner mission this drive for them to keep going and to build something that's usable that solves issues and eventually gains momentum. I actually recently had Taylor Otwell, the CEO and creator of Laravel, which is a PHP framework, come on the Milk and Cookies podcast. And basically the reason he created the Laravel framework was 31.8 thousand stars now, 10.7 thousand forks is because no framework existed that solved the issue that he wanted to do. You know, there was like Ruby on Rails, there was Flask, Django, there was all these other ones that existed, but none of them really did what he wanted to do. None of them solved his problem. And so he just made his own. And he never had the intention of Laravel becoming as big as it is now, but he was driven by something beyond the scope of just writing code. He had a problem, nothing was there that really solved his issue, and he made his own, and he was driven and became a really successful developer and Laravel is a very successful framework. To tie all of this in, make sure you are keeping up with resources like textbooks, videos, all of that. Courses, I think they're great. I think in moderation, it's very good. But also, if you want to start building, solve your own problems. Don't solve other people's problems that don't really relate to you. Although it's a good way to do it, I'm not saying it's not, but you'll be driven more and you'll be forced to learn in a different manner when there's a problem that you are driven to solve versus being told to solve this issue for someone else. But if you enjoyed this content, let me know in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Do you have a better way to tell someone what is the right way to study a programming language? And if you do, make sure you click subscribe. It means a lot to me. And as always, you gotta power it.